Captain John Scudder with ServiceTV.com. We're here with uh, artist Darwin Cook. How's it going? It's going fine. How's the weekend been treating you? That's great, man. You know, North Carolina, and so Charlotte's a wonderful town. Very beautiful people. Very nice to us. Yeah. This is my first time to Heroes Con. It's uh, very laid back. I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina myself. And uh, it's the first time here. I've been up to the Baltimore one, and uh, it's a little more hustle and bustle up there. But down here, it's pretty laid back, and it seems very uh, artist-driven. You know? Yeah, Shelton, uh, the, the gentleman who uh, runs the show, is you know, it's got the biggest artist alley at any convention in North America. You know, he's he's really committed uh, to that side of. Uh, of the industry, which is great for us, you know, as artists. Uh, it's, it's a great show. I've spoken with both Michael Allred and Dave Sim about you specifically and said uh, you're the guy to go to for an uh, interview in regards to uh, a very specific question about what's right and what's wrong with the industry. Right. Well, you know, what's what's wrong, you know, I'll try to deal with it as quickly as possible. Um, in the late 70s, uh, all the comic fans decided to get into the business. The problem is it was a bunch of superhero fans. And an industry that had, up until that point, catered to almost every genre imaginable, slowly and slowly was narrowed down and boiled down to a point where it was superhero comics, and that's, that's all there were. And then they, they all were writing these comics for each other, not for a mass market, not for young people. And as they aged, the content aged to suit their needs. And the idea is, you know, when you're an adult, you're supposed to turn to, to other forms of entertainment, maybe, or appreciate comics for what they were. But that, wasn't, that hasn't been the case. So now we have superheroes that rape. We have, we have our heroin addicts, we have all this kind of bullshit that's been heaped on to these characters that were meant to entertain kids and give them a little sense of right and wrong and, and adventure. And I think it's, it's so sad. And, and you see what the strategy has done. It's, it's driven a market. Like in 1972, Jimmy Olsen Comics sold 200,000 copies a month and it was canceled because that wasn't enough to keep it going. These days, the best-selling book can barely scrape past 70,000. Never mind the worst-selling books. So let, let's take a look at that strategy that's been applied to this business. How did it work out? Not too good. And the less people that read them, the more expensive they have to be. And the more cryptic they have to be to cater to that tiny little market that they've got. That's what's wrong. And if you couple that with the fact that they've completely ignored digital, you know, because they're terrified of it. Their entire infrastructure is based on print. And so they've completely ignored this other platform. And, you know, I don't know how they're going to pull it back together at this point. And I don't think they know either. Now, what's good is the exact opposite. The fact that we're at a point today where anybody, anywhere, can put a comic book together and get it in front of the entire planet without, without spending a dime on printing or distribution. And, and that's the good thing, and, and I think that's what's going to save it. These young people who have nothing to do with the industry we're in, just going out and doing their own work and putting it out there and so you're, you're, letting people respond to it. You're definitely a backer then of the uh, internet uh, business and uh, putting their online comics out there and distributing it just as quickly as possible. Well, I look at it this way. You know, you can stand in front of a tidal wave and, and say, I don't see the tidal wave and I don't want to get hit by the tidal wave, but you're still going to get swept away in it. So this tidal wave is here and you, you, either, you either ride it or, it, or let it wash you out, you know? It's not like we can find a way to stop digital from happening. Um, so, yeah, you know, you jump in. Uh, what, what are you currently working on right now? I'm actually uh, working on my first ebook. Uh, it'll be an exclusive uh, electronic book. Uh, there will be no print version of it. And uh, I'm not just doing a book and then cutting it up into a PDF here. Uh, we're actually looking at the technology, the touchscreen technology everyone's using, and looking at the storytelling opportunities that gives us. You know, the degree to which we can bring the reader into the storytelling process, when they're the ones controlling the speed at which they expose the work to themselves, they can zoom in, zoom out, you can use pull-downs and pop-ups. I, I think there's like just 
it's such a rich and open area right now. I, you know, I can't, I can't think of anybody who likes to tell stories visually who wouldn't be excited, you know, by by what we're on the verge of here. Fantastic. Now, uh, this is our second part uh, of the program. Uh, talk about uh, Dave Sim and uh, have you any influence? Uh, has his work had any influence on your work at all? Well, I don't think Dave's work and my work. You'd see any direct influence in terms of content, but Dave was an enormous influence on anybody uh, that decided that they wanted to produce something of their own. And being Canadian, probably even more so. Dave, Dave's name, you know, carried carried all that weight up home. Like he was the guy, and always will be the guy that did all of those books that put all that work together and never, you know, it never deviated from that. And, you know, that's such a strong example. And it, it, it's such a, uh, uh, you know, a monument to, to, to the guy's determination. I think, I think I get a lot more from Dave in that regard. The type of person he was, and, and and the type of commitment that he brought to what he did, I think that's that's the real inspiration. Darwin, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome.